Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of JoyBaking.com. Today we're going to make a coffee and walnut cake, and this is what it looks like. This is a two-layer butter cake. It's wonderfully soft and moist, and as the name implies, this cake does contain coffee and walnuts, and we're also going to fill and frost the top with a coffee frosting. So the first thing you will need to do is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need two 8 inch round pans, that's 20 centimeters. And I like to use pans that have about 2 inch tall sides, that's about 5 centimeters. And then you can either butter the inside of your pans, or I'm just going to spray mine today with one of these non-stick sprays. And then I like to line the bottom of the pans with parchment paper. That, that way we kind of have a double thing not to stick. So there we go. Now, the coffee flavor for our cake is actually coming from, I'm using instant espresso powder. You could also use an instant, like a coffee granules. So I'm, what you need is one and a half tablespoons, which is about six grams of instant espresso. And then to dissolve it, I'm just going to add one tablespoon of really hot boiling water to dissolve it. Stir it. Now this, that amount of coffee, it'll give us a coffee flavor, but it's not like a really strong coffee flavor. If you prefer like more, a stronger flavor, you could go up to like about two tablespoons of the instant espresso. So now, if you, for the batter, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, you could use a hand mixer for this. The first thing you will need is three quarters of a cup, which is 170 grams of butter. Have your butter at room temperature. I'm using unsalted. I like the flavor and I like to control the salt in the recipe. So that's why I'm using unsalted. You could use salted, res uh, salted butter. So now I'm just gonna beat this on like medium speed just until it's nice and smooth. And as always, when you're making any type of batter, scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl as much as you need to to make sure everything gets mixed together. So now we're going to add our sugar. I'm using a combination of white, granulated, and light brown sugar. So you will need a half a cup, 100 grams of granulated white sugar, and then a half a cup, 100 grams of firmly packed light brown sugar. I really like the combination of the two sugars in this cake. And then I'm going to add just one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract. That's for flavoring. So if you don't want to use vanilla, you just can just leave it out. But vanilla, coffee, I think go together. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is beat this on medium high speed until it's nice and light and fluffy. I find, you know, with my mixer around three minutes. So this is what you're looking for. You see it's nice and light colored, very fluffy. So now what we're going to do is add three large eggs. Have your eggs at room temperature and I'm going to add them one at a time. So add that, beat it in, and then add the next and the next. going to scrape this and then add the last egg. Okay, that's good. 
So now in a separate bowl, I have one and three quarter cups, which is 225 grams of all purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that, I'm adding one and a half teaspoons, six grams of baking powder, and then a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of baking soda, and then a half a teaspoon, two grams. I'm using kosher salt. Now, if you use salted butter, then I would just leave out this salt. And I'm just gonna whisk all this together. Now you could sift your ingredients as well, your dry ingredients. You wanna make sure that the baking soda, the baking powder and the salt are really mixed into your flour. And so I'm going to add this in three additions to my batter and I'm gonna alternate that with my coffee and a third of a cup, 80 milliliters, 80 grams of milk. I'm using a full fat, a whole milk. You could use a reduced fat and have your milk at room temperature. So I'm gonna add about a third of my flour mixture here and have your mixer on low speed. You don't want that coming up. And you just wanna mix it until it's mixed in. You don't wanna mix it too much. Okay, and then half of our milk. And then I'm gonna add that instant espresso. Our batter is gonna change color here. <laughs> okay, mix that in. Oh, it's such a beautiful color. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little more flour. And then the rest of our milk. then the rest of our flour and because this is a walnut cake need to add some walnuts I'm adding a half a cup 55 grams of chopped walnuts now I mine are fairly coarsely chopped because I like when I cut into the cake have you know a little piece of uh, walnut you could do it finer if you prefer that so I'm just going to add that in there and mix that in It's important not to, at, once you add your flour and your liquid, you don't want to over mix your batter because, you know, that means you'll, you'll have too much gluten development and then your cake will be a little tough. So be mindful of that. Let's put that in here. Okay, so now. I still have a little flour on the sides. I'll just do that by hand. Smell the coffee. I just think it's such a beautiful color. Pretty cake. So now we want to divide the batter evenly between our two pans. If you have a scale, that is like the most accurate way. It's important to get about the same amount of batter in each pan so they bake the same time you don't want one you know taller and you know five minutes early but the time other than the other cake so if you have a scale you will need about 445 grams per pan i actually think this is so much easier than eyeballing <laughs> Then, I'm just going to even these out. I'm using an offset spatula. You could just use the back of a spoon. Okay, there we go. So now, baking. 
One, you want to make sure that there's, when you put your two pans in the oven, there's a little bit of space between them so that the air can circulate around your pans. And of course, everybody's oven is a little different. So baking time and also it would be the type of pans you're using. So I find around 20 minutes. So typically I like to check my uh, cakes, you know, maybe two, three minutes before that just to double check. So they will rise, a toothpick inserted into the center will come out just clean and they will just start to pull away from the sides of the pan and when you touch them, it, the top, it'll kind of spring back. So somewhere around 20 minutes. coffee and walnut cakes are now done. So put your pans on a wire rack. You can see nice, they rose nicely. Just starting to pull away from the sides of the pan and then they do spring back when they're lightly pressed. So I'm going to let them cool in the pans on a wire rack for about 10 minutes and then when we come back we will take them out of the pans. So to take your cake out of the pan, I'm using an, an offset spatula run along the inside just to make sure it's not sticking and then take your rack, flip it, take off the top, oh my paper came right off with it, otherwise peel the parchment off and then I want to flip it right side up back on to a wire rack so they're still a little warm. I'm going to let them cool completely and then when we come back we will make our coffee frosting. So now for our coffee frosting. If you have a stand mixer like this, use your paddle attachment, or you can use a hand mixer, or really you could just mix this in a bowl with a whisk. So the first thing you will need is four ounces, which is 115 grams of mascarpone cheese. That's an Italian soft cheese. It has this wonderful buttery rich flavor and almost velvety texture to it. Kind of, it's kind of like cream cheese, but better, I think. You can normally find it in eight ounce uh, tubs, 225 gram tubs, in the deli section of your grocery store. Now, I will say it can be a little expensive. So, if you want, you could just substitute with four ounces, 115 grams, of just your regular full fat cream cheese. So, just put that in your mixer. And then I'm just going to beat this just until it gets nice and smooth. Okay, didn't take long. So now I'm going to add, now we're going to have, which by the way, <laughs> we're having coffee frosting. So again, you will need two teaspoons of the instant espresso that's about you know two grams again you could use the just instant coffee and then I'm just going to dissolve it in like maybe like a teaspoon of hot water like that again if you want stronger or not as strong you can vary that okay so then Back to my sugar. You will need about a half a cup, 60 grams of powdered sugar. You may know that as confectioner or icing sugar. Now, if you find at the end, I always taste my frosting. Oh, don't forget to sift your confectioner frosting. You can adjust the amount of sugar. So just keep that in mind. And then I'm going to add that little bit of our coffee. And then I'd like to add just a half a teaspoon, two grams of pure vanilla extract. I like that combo. So I'm just gonna mix this together. Okay, it is coffee colored. <laughs> Down. 
And we're going to add just one more ingredient to this, and that is heavy cream, heavy whipping cream. And you will need three quarters of a cup, which is 180 milliliters, 180 grams of heavy cream, heavy whipping cream. Now, what that means is it's usually about 35-40% butterfat content, which means when you whip your cream, it will hold stiff peaks. I'm going to switch over. The reason I'm scraping this so well is I'm going to um, switch over to my whisk attachment. You don't have to, but since I have one, whip it faster. Now, if you're, if you're not sure about your cream, like what percent fat, or will it hold stiff peaks, what I would do is whip your cream separately. I'm not because I know that my cream will whip up. But there seems to be some people are not sure, maybe it's not labeled or something, they're not sure if it will whip. So then if that is the case where you live, then whip this cream separately to almost medium peaks and then fold it into the frosting. But like I said, if you know your cream is heavy cream, then you can just add it right in here. And what I'm gonna do start on low speed. I'm going to increase it to medium high and I'm going to beat it just until it's like a spreading consistency. Watch it carefully. If you overbeat it, it tends to curdle, so be careful. <laughs> okay. So that looks good. I typically like to finish it off by hand because I don't want to overbeat it. If you did, by any chance, overbeat it, then just add a little more of that heavy whipping cream and then that'll smooth it out. So this is what I'm looking for. Nice spreading consistency. So now, you have your plate or serving platter. What I'm going to do is, I'm actually, this time, going to flip it up so the bottom, so I have a nice, straight, flat surface, and then I'll just take, I'm just eyeballing here, and then just take your a spatula, you just use a knife, or I'm using a flat spatula here, and spread it. We are doing what is called a naked cake, which means the sides aren't frosted. If you wanted to frost the sides, then you would probably have to double the, the uh, recipe for the frosting. But this has become quite popular to leave the sides unfrosted. And I also like it because it's, not a, it's just enough frosting. Sometimes when you frost the top and the sides, you know, it can be a little, little much. So, there we go. Try to get it as flat. That looks pretty good. And, gotta be careful because, you know, if you freshly bake cakes tend to be a little soft. We don't want them falling apart on us. So, there we go. Now what I'm going to do, you don't have to, I'm going to actually pipe some pretty designs on the top. So what I have here is a pastry bag fitted with a uh, star tip that's a, I'm using a Wilton 1M. So let's put aside a little bit of frosting, you know, maybe half a cup. You don't have to if you don't want to. Purely optional. You don't need any fancy decorating skills for this. This is what I like. Nice homey cake. Everyone loves it. And I think it's really pretty. The colors, the look. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then. What I like to do when I'm 
you take a flat edge and I find it a lot easier than trying to use my hand to get that frosting down at the other end of the bag. And then you want to try to get all the air out and then twist the bag. Whoops. And hold in one hand. This hand is a guide. And I'm just going to do so. See if I have enough to go all the way in between here. I think so. Just enough. Okay. I think that's so pretty. <laughs> and then we will finish it off with some walnuts. That way people know that they're, you know, if you put a nut, the nuts that you're using in the cake as decoration, then people instantly know that this has walnuts in it. That. And then if you want, I just have some finely chopped. You could put some in the center. And there we have it, our coffee and walnut cake. Isn't that gorgeous? So you do need to store this in the refrigerator because there is that cream in the frosting. And then typically what I like to do is serve it at room temperature. So, you know, about 15, half an hour before you're going to serve it, you could take it out. But we're going to, it's a little soft. Normally I would put this in the fridge, but we're going to try a piece now. So there we have. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Oh, there's the inside. Whoop, I think it's going to fall over. And, oh, I didn't get a fork. So let's try some. This is for the people that love coffee. It's not a real strong coffee flavor, but you can definitely taste it. And I really like that it's in both in the cake and then that, I mean, that frosting is so good with the cream and the uh, mascarpone cheese, really nice. And the crunch of the walnuts, the, the cake is buttery soft. A really nice cake. And you have to try this one. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.